Hi everyone, we are here from Giornate Cardiologiche Torinesi. I'm here with Professor Rafael Rosso, uh, University of Tel Aviv, who just gave us a fantastic presentation regarding early repolarization. Early repolarization is a frequent encountered condition during electrocardiographic uh, examination. So, Professor Rosso, how can we identify the patients who can be at high arrhythmic risk due to this condition? That's a very good question. This is the one million dollar question. Uh, the problem is that uh, uh, the benign form of early repolarization is extremely frequent. You can see it in up to 40-50% of ECGs of young individuals. And uh, on the other side, the malignant form of early repolarization, what is called the early repolarization syndrome, is an extremely rare disorder. Uh, there are some features on the ECG that can be helpful in differentiating the two conditions, but it's important to remind that there's no absolute marker that uh, is, uh, gives a screening of 100%. So you can look at the amplitude of the J waves, which are usually in patients with a syndrome. It a uh, very high in amplitude, more than two millimeters. Uh, in some cases, if you find a very diffuse pattern of early repolarization is suspicious for uh, bad condition. Uh, we've been working on the ST segment, which follows the J wave, and we found that uh, horizontal or descending uh, pattern is more frequently seen in patients with early repolarization syndrome compared to the rapidly ascending, which is frequent in the normal pattern of early repolarization. And other features are the amplitude of the T wave in the lateral leads, which are small. Uh, small T wave means uh, less than 10% of the R wave. And other features that uh, um, there is the behavior of the J wave in changing of the heart rate. So if you have a pose for an ectopic beat, usually in patients with early repolarization would see an increase in amplitude of the J wave, while in uh, the normal pattern uh, of the benign form of early repolarization, this doesn't occur. And also atrial pacing uh, reduce the amplitude of the J waves in the early repolarization syndrome and why in normal early repolarization benign form it increased the amplitude but again it's very important to remind that even if you put together all these uh, markers that i've been talking about uh early repolarization syndrome is extremely rare disorder so your way of dealing with an asymptomatic individual is mainly based on family history uh, of sudden cardiac death, if there is a family history of cardiac arrest for early repolarization. But if you look at a patient who is totally asymptomatic, no family history, even though he has this pattern, you might uh, want, would like to, to leave him alone most of the time. What do you think that the next uh, 10 years will uh, hold for us? Um, as i shown in the presentation, uh, in the last couple of years there have been a lot of work in epicardial mapping of uh, the early repolarization syndrome as has been done for the Brugada syndrome. We have learned by putting cutters in epicardium that what we thought it was a, only a depolarization abnormality is, a, is a, sorry, a, only a repolarization abnormality is a depolarization that's for the Brugada syndrome. And we've seen that all, also for the early repolarization syndrome, there might be also a depolarization problem. So maybe even the name early repolarization syndrome is not correct because that might be really in some patients mainly depolarization of normalities rather than repolarization. I think that uh, these cases are rare, but we are collecting more and more patients. I know that from uh, Nademani that they have been doing more than 100 cases of malignant early repolarization. So I think that in the next future we will know if what is the most common pattern, if it's repolarization or depolarization or a combination of the two as has been proposed for the Brugada syndrome.